things. We fuck everything up. Have we started? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how's it going? This is episode 46. Yep. Joined here by my lovely friend, Mr. Ian. Hello. Mr. Lovely Adam on the computer. And Mr. Stephen Davin. How's it going, dude? Great. Steve Dave. Yeah. Steve Dave, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's uh, pretty shitty weather conditions outside. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we all made it here safe. Where do you find the confidence to show up to a place like this by yourself? (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Because all of our other guests, they always have to come with somebody. Yeah? Nobody's ever really arrived by themselves. Yeah, I don't think so. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Lone Ranger. That's like a very interesting... Yeah. I don't know. Like, is you think like just like rolling up to this spot is weird alone, or like? Well, yeah, this this building's a little weird, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. I just I don't think anybody really has the confidence to just show up by themselves. I feel like somebody always needs to come up with their best friend. Well, I mean, like it makes sense because it's like if you don't know the people, then yeah. you're like, oh, I need like someone there who I know so I can talk to them, kind of. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, it's uh, pretty surprising. Yeah. Do they use them to facilitate the conversation kind of thing? I don't know. They usually just sit there and laugh at the stupid shit we say. Except for uh, Jarrell's episode. There was an episode with Jarrell. Oh, yeah. And Jarrell Fisher and Sophia. And, and then they brought a friend and uh, she had uh, a couple of things to say and make a conversation. Yeah, a couple of noises to make. Yeah, it was good. It was hilarious. Do you reenact dinosaurs ever? Do I reenact dinosaurs? Yeah. <laughs> this one girl this one girl's really good at making dinosaur noises that we had on as a guest. As a guest's friend, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, man, I'm not that confident. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> it's like that uh commercial where yeah, like, what's your thing? Classic. You yeah. Know, I mean, know. like I I mean I I've never tried it, so I'm not giving it a shot. All right, we'll, we'll right try now. it when the podcast is off. Yeah, you guys like. Are you guys gonna make that a thing? Are we gonna do that? You gonna do that always? Shit, I don't know. Should we? Yeah, we should. Like, if the if someone else did it and then I do it, then everyone else has to do it. Yeah, sounds like we have to do that right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, we can circle back, but (laughs) (laughs) not ready yet. So, with your music, I've noticed um, what what genre would you call put Uh, your music under? I mean, it's mostly hip hop, I guess. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's really different. Yeah, it's a little. It's kind of got like a dreamy vibe to that. Yeah, it's like super chill. That's like I don't know. I make all my own beats and shit, so it's really. Yeah, I was gonna ask where you got those from. So it's like I'm like uh, I'm just this is the sound I'm trying to hear. My my voice is like fuck. Sorry, I touched the microphone. Hopefully, they just. That's all right. I've been (laughs) fucking with mine this entire time. uh, my voice, I'm like, I, I I was recording today too, and I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't know how much I dig my voice. Like, I can't do that much shit. It's pretty monotone. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I wasn't making my own beats, I don't think I would be like rapping either. Would you have released your music without rapping over it, or do you yeah. feel like it was empty without it? Um, I used to like when I, before I like rapped, I was just like I made a lot of beats. They were all like kind of like dreamy, like lo-fi type stuff, mm-hmm. and. Uh, that's like all I did for a long time, probably like four or five years. So I was like fifteen or sixteen. Like I was, I was always really interested in music and shit, like in general, like singing and playing guitar and stuff. And then I always like heard about Fruity Loops, so I'm just like, Are you still using Fruity Loops? Yeah, Jesus Ooh, Christ, Patrick hates Fruity Loops. <laughs> yeah, not into Dude, it. I can't understand it. What do you mean? I don't know how the fucking layout works. Like it, to me. And I don't know, I haven't delved too far into much else. Like, I have looked at everything, but, like, it seems like the easiest to get to me. Fuck, maybe. <laughs> like, everything else, I'm like, dude, that looks really hard. But with Fruity yeah. Loops, it's, like, almost, like, the most basic. Weird. I think the complete yeah. opposite. I yeah. started on Fruity Loops, I think, and then I went to, like, Ableton for a bit, and then Studio then One. Reaper. Yeah, Reaper, you know? Gotta have my Reaper. Like, I'm... uh. 
I'm nervous to try a different one. That's the thing. And Why? but like I'm I'm interested in getting like Ableton or some shit. But like like pay for it, do it all do it all legit, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I don't know if I'm like that's such a tough call. Yeah, exactly. So like it's an investment, right? Yeah. So you really have to look at it that way or else it's like kinda hard to justify. But I yeah. I don't know. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. For new artists it seems like I don't know. Seems like a big investment, especially if you don't know what the fuck you're doing with the program. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just kind of trying it out. Well, I guess that's why they have free trials, right? That's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Try guess, before you buy. I guess that's a very good point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. You do. Um, there's a lot of uh, like you leave shit in your music that I don't feel like anybody else would leave in their song. What do you mean? Like in Kitten, where your voice cracks. <laughs> I'm like, everybody else would have redone that, and you just left it in. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I mean, I, I liked how that sounded. Yeah. yeah. You know? No, it fit the vibe. Was, yeah. Was, exactly. Yeah. At first, it was really jarring, but then I'm just like, oh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you sit on that for a bit, or did it kind of just, were you just like... No, I was like, ma- I was making the track, and then I had like takes where I did that, and then, like, I think I did that, that was my first take. Okay. And then I like recorded something else after, and I was just like, "Now nah, I'm feeling that first one, dude." Like, you know, it's got a little distinct yeah. part to it, kind of. I don't know. That's interesting, though. I wonder how many people like hear that and they're like, "Whoa, dude!" <laughs> you know, because <laughs> "Whoa, dude!" in a bad way or a good way. I mean, either either way. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah, I definitely feel like that's something that really sticks out. Yeah, Cause nobody does that. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely an ethos I have. I feel like maybe it's a bit too much, but I just don't care. And that's like the vibe. Yeah. It's like I do care about a lot, about a lot of things, but I'm not trying to like be all intense with my music. Like mm-hmm. I'm just trying to like do how I feel. Yeah. You know, like I really like slow shit. I like a lot. Like I think a big influence on like the vibe was always like Houston shit. Because I started listening to that when I was, like, getting, like, good at making beats and stuff like that. And, like, at least from my perspective, I don't know. Like, chopped and screwed? Yeah, stuff like that. And it's just, like, I feel like I take a lot of that, like, slow. Because I used to slow down the end of, like, all my tracks. Yeah. And it's like that on, like, a bunch of songs on my, like, my first Mm mixtape. And uh, I haven't really done that as much. I might do that, like, once on my last project, but... That was like my signature on my beats, but I didn't have a tag, so I was just like, man, I'm just going to slow it down at the end every time. Are you going to have a tag now? No. Why not? Because now, like, my voice is just my tag, basically. True. You know? But I don't know. I've thought about it a lot. It's something I have, like, I should make a tag, like, or just use, like, uh, from, like, something from, like, Mall Rats or some shit. Mm-hmm. Or just, like, tell him Steve Dave. Like, I've tried to sample that, but yeah. it's just, like, I can't, it doesn't. Yeah, some samples are so hard to fit into a fucking song. Yeah, it's just it's just it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta like chop it up and make it at least fit like two beats basically, or like the ba- a bar at the most. <clears throat> but you gotta make sure that it falls on the right beats. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes that's a bitch because the sample just gets too warped. Yeah. Sometimes you hear different producer samples though, and they put their vocal tag, and you can hear it like not exactly placed on the grid on the same spot sometimes they'll you know put it like an eighth note off or whatever (laughs) he knows he knows so are you making an announcement today about no you're new you already made an announcement yeah no i'm sorry i I should have saved something for here i do have some stuff i'm working on let's um but uh yeah let's plug what you have going on yeah right now maybe We'll sh- yeah, we'll shift to that. Yeah. That's cool. One hundred percent. Uh oh. That's not a call, we're good. I don't know why it wouldn't matter if it was a call. <laughs> I wouldn't pick up in the middle of this. That would be actually really interesting if you did. Yeah. Like <laughs> if I did, him, I would get make, him on the line. I would make it quick. And I wouldn't make it obvious. I'd be like yeah. I, I You have w- to put him on speaker though. Yeah. I think that's the commitment. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it happens, you have to put somebody on speaker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's fair okay that's a deal perfect okay. <laughs> uh, but anyways yeah i have a new project it comes out 
on Saturday. What's today? It's like Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this weekend, it's going to drop. I'm going to drop it on SoundCloud. It should be in stores online and shit. But you know how that stuff is sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a gamble. It takes a bit of time. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like every time I've ever done it, it's worked out perfectly. But I just like, I hate being like, man, it's coming out this day. And then like saying everything, like it's going to be everywhere. And then it doesn't work. I've never done that, but I'm just like, how do you, if um, I don't, where, how do you upload your music? Um, I get like all my digital shit is like handled by Pink Lemonade. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Those guys just hook it up. Shit. Just, yeah. How'd you get in contact with them? Oh, let me think. I don't know. It was just like through the scene last year. I was like making stuff with three nines and then they had releases with pink lemonade and stuff. And, uh, I knew they were doing a lot of like kind of more online releasing. Like they were releasing like cassettes and like, like vinyl and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but like pressed by other people. Okay. So like, they just like, I don't know exactly how all of it works to be honest with you, but they're the homies and they're hooking it up. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool. They can hook you up with different formats, you know. Yeah. Kind of have like an old and new school. Yeah. Thing. Well, well, like Scott, um, what well, Scott Rubello, he's part of Pink Lemonade. Okay. He, I uh, he was like one of the first people who like said something to me about my music. Essentially, like he heard my mixtape and like I didn't know him or anything, and he came up to me at uh the Snake Pit. I don't know if you guys ever went there. I've heard so many people talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Heard about it. Yeah. But- it's like I, went. I was I came here when I first like started kind of like hanging out in the scene that was like peaking and then ending. And so like I had a lot of experiences with that stuff. Like it was pretty tight. They had like some punk rock flea markets there like early on. And now they're like a chainsaw all the time. But uh, anyways. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> My train of thoughts just disappearing. Yeah, yeah, the snake pit, and then Scott came up to me, and he's just like, "Hey, man, I like fuck with your mixtape. You're Steve Dave, right?" I put my face on like the, like like the cover of my first EP, oh, or cool. my first mixtape, and everyone was just like, "Like that's you." Like I seen your because I put we postered it and shit around, so that was kind of funny. But uh, yeah, and then I met I don't know how I met Derek, but he's pretty cool too, and those guys just hooked it up. Sorry, I'm kind of dragging this out, but no, it's a, no, yeah. not at all. No, yeah. this is like, what this is what you guys want, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we want all <laughs> we the want info. to talk, yeah, as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like I, I've uh, I've pro- I've interviewed like a lot of people, but I've never I've done like one or two like interviews where I'm the subject being interviewed. You've and, interviewed like, a lot of people, yeah. Like in what format? Like for like artists and stuff or in a different like uh i don't think i've interviewed any like probably interviewed like a few artists but like not like specifically like i I just uh i wrote for like my student paper and stuff like that oh cool yeah and uh so who'd you interview like you know just like like news shit basically like like the chief of police and shit like that that's pretty cool yeah you know like stuff like just like i'd like get a statement from him like St. Patrick's Day. It's like the student paper at Laurier. It's like... How's Ezra Street? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what's going on? How, like, who died? You know, what's going on here? Basically, <laughs> like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No one died, but... Well, maybe... That place is Maybe this wild. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a little too fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, I probably shouldn't even say anything, like, too bad about it, because it's just like... Say whatever you want. Yeah. More controversial, the better. No, I'm not. I, let's. <laughs> there's got to be better controversies. That's <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so, I don't know. Have you ever been to Ezra before? Uh, once to pick up weed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. So never during any of the festivities. Uh, no, I I want to stay away from that shit. Yeah, it's a little too much for me. I'm the same. Yeah, 100. percent That's like. That's ridiculous, dude. Yeah, and it's like it's all people. it's all yeah. like seventeen year olds and shit <laughs> yeah. too. It's not yeah, like yeah. It's, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, it's not true. uh it's not like all it, no one's over like twenty two. Yeah, yeah, how many underage people are drinking there? I don't know if I want to know that that number. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's the crazy thing is like, even from my experience, just like growing up kind of peripherally to this area, it's like people are just like, yeah, let's go to in grade 12. People are like, yo, we're going to that Ezra party. Like, at least I was like that right age where the parties were popping off. So just thinking about it, it's like, man, there's probably so many just like local kids and shit who just go there. Yeah, probably. Just party hard. Yeah. I got a Laurier, Laurier sweater from a Laurier. <laughs> I got a Laurier sweater for my brother or sister, and then they just wear it. And yeah, go out Laurier there, <laughs> Laurier. <laughs> we uh, we would just find random college students or university students and go to their place. Yeah, they would just have parties and yeah, and then yeah. become our friends for some reason. We probably just entertain them a lot with our shout out to Johnny. Yeah, with our naive <laughs> antics. Yeah. I I, uh, I actually went to school in uh, Brantford at their campus and like moving here was so tight it's just, just like actually i'm not trying to hate on Brantford either i feel like i'm like overthinking everything i say now but uh um there's like not that much of a strong like music scene or anything like there's a bit of one in Brantford, but like coming here is it i'm the like one with the our place our place or is that brampton i always uh, mess them up Brantford. Brantford with the casino right yeah it's got the okay, casino yeah, yeah, okay yeah yeah yeah, anyway, sorry, go on. No, um, I was just going to say, Brantford, not a... Uh, I mean, I didn't really get involved in the music scene either. I didn't, couldn't find one. Like, I spent a lot, a lot of time there, and I still, like, never really thought about that. And then I actually, like, moved here, and it was just, like, I, like, met, like, one person, and then I met another person, and then it was just, like, oh, man, I'm meeting all, like, the same people who go to all... At least in, like, certain scenes, you know? You kind of, like, get to know the regulars, and it's, like, really tight. What brought you out here? uh a job yeah job of what doing what i was like <laughs> when i finished school i moved here to like edit the student paper at laurier oh cool yeah and uh it was pretty weird why it was just uh i never wrote for like i wrote for them like once or twice they like okay yo here's some <laughs> i spilled my drink that's all right okay. but uh sham wow over there <laughs> here, here's some uh Here's some low key facts that I, I probably shouldn't talk about, but like the first thing I wrote for them, I think was like a story about. It might have been a story about eating ass. <laughs> like I think it was. No. Way. Yeah, like they were like they had the they have like groups or whatever where they chat about like what they're doing. Yeah. And they're like someone's someone's got to write a story about eating ass for the Valentine's Day issue, and I was just like, <laughs> like man, fuck I'm it. in guys. Yeah, I'm just like I'll do it, and I just like I don't know, I just like talked to like people i knew about it and then like called like a sex line and they were just like what's wrong with you basically <laughs> like and uh it was funny as hell do you have like, a copy of this like i have physical copies of it yeah you should post those man here's the thing yo it's like the picture is like <coughs> it's like a friend of mine too and it's just like uh like she's wearing clothes but it's just like her like silhouette <laughs> no 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 it's just there <clears throat> she's just wearing underwear and then like the words are just like around her that's so <laughs> fucking funny. Bottom. And it's like, I'm not even, I would never do that. Like, I would never personally be like, I'm going to put this out. Like, I actually edited the same paper after, and I was just like, I'm not doing shit like that. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to. Who's that eating ass guy? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was it was pretty funny. And they put it up in, like, a frat house and shit like that. Like, it's like. That's so fucking yeah. funny. Yeah. And I'm like, man, it was, it was funny, but. Just like that's not the glory I was going for when I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. That's true, you know. Yeah. But it, it it definitely like helped because I only I wrote at my other paper in Brantford. I wrote like about uh like I knew this dude who's like he's a pretty good friend of mine now. But he uh he's like man I got abducted by aliens like for real for real. And he's just like he never said like a a joke to me like a real like I'm fuck like I'm lying to you like ever. Uh, until like he's like yeah dude uh, I'm not trying to say he's lying either but one day he's just like yeah man I've been abducted by aliens like deadpan ass serious and I'm just like I believe that bro like I'll write, I'll write about that like I believe your experience <laughs> and then I just wrote about it and talked about like how uh, you know sleep paralysis is like one of the explanations for getting abducted by aliens and like you just like try and have you ever had sleep paralysis no I don't I I'm good really? yeah. yeah I sleep all right have you? Nope. Jesus. Have you? you? Yeah. Really? That's, that's kind of like How that's kind of scary. It dude. happened Can, twice. You describe it for me. It happened twice, and the second time, 
my ex and I, we experienced the exact same thing. You guys were abducted, dude. I'm but sorry. It, but it wasn't even that. It was just like, it was just like menacing, get, like ghostly figure right in the corner of the room. And I was just like laying there and I was trying to get her attention, but I couldn't move like anything in my body. And it was the most overwhelming sensation of fear. It's like, I've no, wow. It just felt like I was going to die at that exact moment. So yeah. it, does it feel like that every time like that kind of like I've only had feel like there's impending doom? Yeah. Yeah, it was fucked. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking it's such a terrifying experience. Wow. Yeah, and I don't know I don't know, it was kind of weird how uh my ex and I experienced it at the exact same time. Fucking aliens, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was this alien story? It was just like he like he was like man, the the alien spaceship, it wasn't like the mothership, whatever, like, as a spaceship came in my room, like, I was abducted from my room, and, like, I had to move my bed so the spaceship could, like, sit down on my floor. <laughs> and then he's just like, man, when I woke up in the morning, my bed was all pushed against the wall and shit. And he's, like, had a scar. He's like, man, I had a scar. And there's, like, a little mark, you know? Just, like, again, I, I like, I swear I want to like, I want to be like this dude's yeah. lying, but, like, I'm like, man, I, why the fuck? And I'm like, you're lying all the time. Every time I talk to him about it, I'm like, you're a liar <laughs> <laughs> and shit. And still, it's just like so persistent. Like you're getting nothing out of it. Damn. It's just like. But yeah. does he tell the exact same story every time? He's like, he's not like a person who like talks about shit like that a mm. lot, but he's never changed any details. That would be kind of a mm. difficult thing to talk about. Yeah. Like yeah. he just talks about it dead serious. Like, hmm. And it's, it's weird because he doesn't. He doesn't talk shit about like any like he's not into conspiracy theories or like anything like that's, that's anything strange. even like rem he's like a complete skeptic like he's just like I only believe in like money and weed basically like <laughs> you know what I mean yeah does he rap too yeah. no oh. he should <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but what like I, I mean if someone who doesn't kind of speculate on anything and just is a firm believer in that kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe it's definitely maybe there's something. It's definitely like some p positive evidence. Like I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say like it's like damning evidence, but it's like it's a vote in the right direction. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel, you know. But this dude's like for real, for real, and it's like trippy because uh, there's like a lot of people who could say that to me, and I'd be like, "You're fucking lying." <laughs> Like, 100%, I know it. And they'd be like, yeah, obviously. It's like, this dude's just, like, holding this shit up for so long, for, like, years and years. And it's like... It's like that story from grade four he can't ever let go. Yeah, dude. <laughs> how are you gonna, How are you going to feel if you figure out that he's lying to you? You're going to be pissed? going to stop being friends? No, definitely not. I think, like, that's pretty hilarious. If, especially if he did it for that long and he's just, like, dead serious about it all the time. Like, that's good. Like, that's a skill almost, right? I couldn't <laughs> yeah, do that. I, I couldn't, like, make up a story. Like, like, I always fuck around like that. Just, like, make up some dumb story. And then immediately after, I'll just be like, nah, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> like, I do that all the time. Yeah. So, like, to tell a lie and then to just, like, hold it for, like, five years, dude. And then one day he's like, yeah, I was fucking with you the whole time. I'd be like, dude, like a significant <laughs> amount of my time was like spent pondering that and you were That's just true. fucking with me the whole time. Like I didn't like not enjoy it, yeah. you know, but it's just like, yeah. You kind of wasted my time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, I kind of like that idea though. Just going with a lie for five, six years. <laughs> that takes some dedication. Yeah. I'm not a good liar. That's the thing too. Like I'm not going to come here and be like, oh yeah lines the best i have like <laughs> i'm not just not good at it you know i'm not sure if i'm good at it or not you know like yeah. every time i lie i'm just like <laughs> that's a lie and then i just tell myself it's a lie all the time it's just like to be a good liar you got to just be like i believe it yeah just disconnect yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah dude and like that's tough yeah <laughs> yeah yeah to a certain point yeah that's why i'm like my buddy he's just like straight up doesn't fuck around at all. Like, he never, like, tells, like, little dumb lies about shit. If he's, like, wrong about some shit. Like, he's kind of, like, a know-it-all in that way, too. Like, love him to death. And maybe I'm a bit of a know-it-all, too. But <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. And it's just, like, okay, dude. Like, maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's all That's all I want to speak on him. I don't know if he'll see this. But <laughs> he won't want me to say anything else. 
Is what's it? His address? Yeah, what's his address? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I truly don't. Perfect. Live somewhere in Toronto. Ooh. Well. Yeah. That's a lead. That's a yeah. That's yeah. A, that's yeah. a pretty huge lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other stories of paranormal activity that you've experienced personally? Uh, I don't know. I feel like like that's that. Uh, I'm. If I'm hesitating, then it's like, yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah so I don't know. I like. I feel like I'm already kind of backed into a corner that way. But okay, wait. This is music related, so I'll tell it. This is one. Okay, one time I was like nine years old. No, no. Okay, wait. My brother was like, he's a couple years older than me. He's doing his like grade eight graduate. You know how you do like grade eight graduation shit, where yeah. you like finish grade school. It's like party and shit. Yeah, yeah. My brother. It was that night. I was at home. Cause I was like, fuck that. I don't know. I think I couldn't go to the party, but, uh, so I would have been 11 and, uh, I was just like playing my little mini guitar and I was playing 53rd and third by the Ramones. I had like a little cassette player and I was recording myself playing 53rd and third. Like it sounded like so bad and shit. It was great though. <laughs> like I used to just record all this stuff on cassette when I was like, 12 or 13 i did the same thing and then when i was like yeah that's so the first thing when i started releasing music i was like gotta put out a cassette dude did you keep those cassettes yeah fuck god yeah damn it. but only like a, one or two of them you know what i mean like yeah, i'm trying so I, like, hard to find mine but i, I re-recorded over the same one all the time and then, <laughs> and then cds were a thing so i was yeah. just like no more no more cassettes yeah. like i feel like i was just like like it was easier to record on cassette back then because yeah, you just had to hit record yeah you know uh, but anyways, so I was recording myself playing 53rd and 3rd. There's like kind of like stops in that song. Man, I keep burping because of the fizzy water. Fuck. Fucking buble. Pardon me. I'm, not, I'm trying not to burp into the microphone. I don't want to embarrass myself. But yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah, it's okay. Nobody gives a shit. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, like watcher, listener, like about breaking this up. I'm trying to get right to it. I was trying to make this super quick. But uh, anyways, I was recording myself playing 53rd and 3rd. In my living room, it's like home. My parents probably in bed because they used to go to bed all like super early all the time when I was a kid. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I think I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 multiple things, but um, anyways, rocking out, playing fifty third and third, recording it, and nothing happens that night. It's all mm -hmm. good. But uh, I go back and like listen to it, and like. There's like an audible scream, and like yeah. I was like, my parents were in bed, like they were. It wasn't coming from. It was coming from like upstairs, you know. And uh, it wasn't me, bro. It was like a lady, but like that wasn't that wasn't what made me revisit the tape. Yeah. It was like uh, the lady who used to live in my house died that day, and she was like, I remember when she like left the house, she was like crying and shit, because like her and her husband had what to move. Is that? Wait. Like, she was just like, I love that house so much, but, like, I'm glad to, like, sell it to, like, a young family and shit like that. Yeah. And uh, it's, like, this super old lady, and the house is old <laughs> as fuck. Like, the house is, like, like that part of the house is, well, that part of the house is, like, probably, like, 50 years old. No, 30 years old now, 40 years old. But the whole, like, the front part of the house is, like, over 100 years old. Just this, like, tiny little thing on the front and then, like, an extension on the back. And, yeah, anyways, she was obsessed with it and crying when she left. She died that night. And I had the screams on the recording. Found them like later. Someone was like, yo, she died that night. And it was just like, because it was at my brother's thing. They announced it because she taught like grade three yeah. at my grade school. She was like the meanest person ever. Damn. But not to speak ill on the dead, but she was like a super <laughs> yeah. mean teacher. And like I lived in her house. So I'm like, man, her ghost is definitely fucking haunting us, dude. Like, <laughs> Did you experience any other hauntings from her? No. From her after, specifically. Dude, after that, me and my brother got all into like paranormal shit. We were just like putting like salt by the door and shit like that, you know, like doing a little like salt seances. I don't even know, dude. Like, did you get a Ouija board? No, we never did. We, we never did that, which is surprising. Like, I feel like I did it. Look, okay, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I don't want to be like sexist in any way, but. I never knew like a dude who was like, yeah, I'm rocking out with the Ouija board. But I knew like a lot of girls <laughs> who were like, yo, let's try the Ouija board. And like the only time I ever like Ouija boarded yeah. is like it was like I was like at a girl's house. <laughs> and then they're like, yo, let's bust out the Ouija board. Like okay. if it, if it yeah, was me and my right. boys, we'd all be like, 
Nah, man, I'm not doing it. Like, we'd all be, like, scared <laughs> yeah. and shit. Like, yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah, that's kind of true. Girls are just fierce. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not trying to generalize, but. They're fearless. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not fucking around with that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a part of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever used a Ouija board. Have you? I haven't even seen one. No? No. I mean, like, on TV and shit, but it, I, I've never personally seen yeah. one. Yeah. Because there's a thing where, like, everybody has to, like, touch the piece yeah and then like push it but yeah. i kind of the plant shit yeah i i, I is that what it's called <laughs> yeah I, I, that's that's wild right. um uh, but i i kind of w- always wondered about that like obviously it's not moving on its own it's just like whoever's man that's the thing the it's like you have to you're doing it with people you like trust so you got like it can't okay, you got to be like man if you're doing with that with someone who's just like a dick yeah. It's like, like you'll know too. Yeah. But it's like if someone just starts saying some really weird, obscure shit. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking wild. Yeah, exactly. That's like I'm not saying it's ghosts, but it's just like someone has like a ghost in their brain subconsciously. <laughs> yeah. That's just like they're not even controlling us doing some weird shit. I don't know. It's like those uh remember those T V shows with nope. those people that would connect with the dead? Yeah, like like uh, John Edward, like a uh, crossing over with John Edward. Oh and yeah, he, and it was dude. and it was kind of like yeah, a live yeah, studio yeah. audience, kind of like like yeah. the Maury Povich show, but he would say something like, uh, "I'm I'm 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 thinking of the letter D." Yeah, and it's like someone's like my 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 grandpa's <laughs> my name was Darren. Oh, yeah, and then he's like, "All right, all right." Oh yeah, those cold yeah. readings. Yeah, exactly. All the cold readings. That shit stuff. is wild. Yeah, that Sylvia Brown chick was pretty bad. Sylvia Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God! She yeah, was, I remember. She did that like Amanda Berry one. I think her mom was on. She was on some talk show and she asked if she knew where her daughter was, and she's like, "Yeah, she's probably dead." Oh and yeah, then she Amanda was like Berry. found a few years right, later. Right, yeah. I actually watched that documentary a few like weeks ago about Amanda Berry, that girl that was like locked up. In yeah, a house by the school for, bus like, driver. Yeah, that was crazy. With two other chicks. Yeah, that's fucked. I don't think I like that story very much. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But uh, no. yeah. Those uh, those Hollywood psychics. Yeah, praying um, like praying on people who just lost somebody is pretty <coughs> fucked up. Yeah, I mean, if you're there, and you like, like, there's a lot of people who's just like they're just waiting for them to say some shit that's like somehow peripherally related to them, so they can be like, get me on fucking John Roberts or whatever <laughs> the fuck his name is. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I wonder what's the the entry form or how do you fi- what form do you have to fill out to get on these kinds of shows do you just have to pay or or do you have like to, to be, be like, in the audience yeah you just fucking call and get tickets yeah i think but, so hard though when you get there and they uh, apparently would read it to the guy in an earpiece and he'd, he'd be like he'd read off the little specifics about the oh, yeah. what was that guy's that? fucking name well that's hurting dude over, yeah john edward no i'm thinking about somebody else he looks like he's a, a tv pastor looks like or whatever like Oh, John Edward. Too, yeah. Fuck, what was his name? Big mean guy. Yeah, big big meanie. But apparently he made millions and millions of dollars. Well, I mean, we're in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah, you guys start a cult. It, yeah, that's <laughs> start a death cult. Yeah. I mean, like I bet you any money that like 10 year 20 years from now there will be like a cult that started because of a podcast. Yeah, and this will be it. Like yeah, I don't know. Joe Can you Rogan's imagine? That Joe, would be like a scary fucking cult, dude. <laughs> Joe Rogan's cult? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just what eats elk and he's got such a weird his... shaped head. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him live and it just it threw me off. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's a little shorty too. Yeah, he is. Pretty cute little fella. <laughs> it's just like he he just doesn't people just say wild shit on his show and he's just like Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's Especially good. Tom DeLong. Yeah. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that one. I wouldn't oh. watch. I wouldn't Actually, watch it. <laughs> I haven't seen. I've I'm, I've maybe seen like one or two episodes. Like I like it. I'm more for the guest. I'm yeah. like like Joe Rogan is such a blank slate, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's, I'm just like he just goes there and like people will say whatever they want to say. Feels like what we're doing now. Yeah. So you guys are doing good because right, well, he's a you. he's a great podcaster. But uh, he's just like yeah, just say whatever you're gonna say and like let's let's talk about that shit. Like yeah, but. I- but at the same time, like, I don't really find it funny. No? I don't know. I, I can't laugh at the shit that he says. I, I think it's, like, not that, like, definitely the, the podcast isn't, like, I feel yeah. that. Yeah, but, I don't think it's But even seeing him live, no. you're just like, this is kind of 
fucking shit. Oh, you're yeah. talking about his like stand up routine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just yeah, everything yeah, yeah, in yeah. general. It's just not funny. Yeah. 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 Well, luckily he's he gets better guests now in his podcast that can kind of just like talk a bunch and kind of you know spill their thoughts and you can kind of get that side. Whereas like other podcasts kind of have to rely on like you know the host to be like the entertainment value in a way or at least to bring that out yeah but yeah like he's had some crazy guests like i don't know the fact that he's able to just like you said like soak in that information by just kind of listening a lot and just kind of asking these very open-ended questions with a hint of like you gotta explain it to me Mm -hmm. kind of thing because i don't know it kind of brings the information which is cool yeah um, there's this video on YouTube of just like it's like I think like 16 or some like a bunch of screens of him just saying it's entirely possible <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's like all at the same time and they're just like saying a bunch of different shit and then it all just lines up and it's like it's entirely possible <laughs> like like that is to me is like Joe Rogan's show let's pull that up yeah can you guys do you guys have like sound YouTube sound and stuff yeah yeah <laughs> that's so cool this is legit this is a good rig this is thanks dude it always seems so crazy when people say that. Oh, yeah. fuck. I guess it's because we've just seen the, I hit the my process of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, you've seen it take form. Yeah. It's great, though. The Thanks. green screen in the back and everything. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Yo, God. can you pull that back? <laughs> Holy fuck. like that's like (laughs) that's joe rogan to me like that's what that's a good summation of like his shit holy shit i feel like (laughs) in a bunch of alternate universes that are going on at the same time a bunch of parallel dimensions that's literally the kind of shit that just happens like if that's true you guys you know about that kind of multiverse theory about like (laughs) A bunch Go of universes on. that are there's like infinite versions of you doing like slightly different things. I kind of feel like while those, if that's true and those are all going at the same time, those are like those moments where just like <laughs> the wave just catches on the same yeah. slope and then everybody says the same thing and then it's really weird how happens. he says it all at this like in the exact same way. Yeah, yeah. What a weird fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I don't know. That's so great. Yeah. That's so great because it's like that's all he says every time. And it's like, man, I yeah. saw Doctor Phil on Joe Rogan, and it was like, like you would, you would like literally come out of that and like know less. Like you would know, <laughs> like, like you would know all these things that just like fuck your brain up. Yeah. And it was just like, man, if anyone's listening to this right now and like everything they're saying is the truth, it's just like, dude. Like that's that's not fucking good. Yeah. Like I see yeah. how you just end up watching like you start with Joe Rogan and then you just like Jordan Peterson and then you're like somewhere else completely. <laughs> just like off this like slippery slope. Yeah. It's like you just gotta put shit in context sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I think I don't think Joe Rogan does that. Which is my criticism. Yeah. Well but good he's got a lot of followers, so yeah. he's doing it this right. This will definitely reach him. Yeah, maybe he's definitely listening right now, even yeah. though we're not streaming live. That's true. He does. Who do you that. think he gets his, his cues from, man? That's true. This is better than his setup. <laughs> his setup is shit. Yeah, yeah, fuck his setup. Wasn't he in a new studio? I have no idea. Looks like he's in like a radio station or some shit. Yeah, Just like, yeah. fuck that. Because I'm pretty sure all those big podcasters, uh, a decent amount of them, share the same studio. Yeah, I know H3 and Theo Vaughn do. Yeah, like a lot of them just have. It's, it's, like, it's like some just some place like this where you just go into all these rooms and they just have their own little corner where they can just have their setup. That's wild. Yeah, yeah on so. the fighter and the kid, they do it in like some business building. Well, they did. They got a new place, but there was just like lawyers down the hall, and there would be all these people just in their room screaming and shit. I guess it's kind of like a music studio if you kind of think about it like big music studios you know you always hear those stories of like records being made and it's like oh this person was down the hall doing that record and whatever yeah and I guess it's kind of like that thing you know big studios big Hollywood studios I've always wondered how that is like if you go down to like LA or something and you're in this like studio and then there's just like four other movies being shot or some shit like that hmm I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know if you ever traveled down to like the States or anything like that. Not like 
same. in like the northern states and shit. Like I've been to like New York a few times. That Chicago. kind of thing. No, I haven't been to Chicago. I wouldn't recommend it really. No. You've been there? Yeah. Nope. Of course. Polish people everywhere. Oh. Oh. Adam seems to like it. <laughs> yeah. Stay in the safe parts. Polish people don't do that. <laughs> and my brother told me he like went to like a like a baseball game or something in Chicago and he just like ended up at like a cookout in like like somewhere random in Chicago and he's just like man it wasn't like wasn't a good place like <laughs> it's like we were all wasted I don't even know how we got there someone just drove us there Damn, yeah hard. and it's just like he's so like not the person who's he's like someone was just like let's go to a baseball game and one thing led to another it's like that's the only way that's happening with Damn. my brother you know yeah but no I haven't uh I haven't done too much traveling I've been like around a few of the provinces for like work kind of stuff conferences and that Ooh, kind of conferences. thing yeah for uh for some newspaper student newspaper stuff so you're like deep into Dude, the look the at media that bug stuff. on your fucking shoulder man Yo, that's oh, what the fuck is, is that just that? a moth yeah what the fuck? <laughs> dude don't flick it at our guest man <laughs> I didn't. I flicked it this way. You got me, bro. What? I didn't. The I did fuck not. The fuck was that? I looked like a moth. Yeah. It was just the giant bug on me. I didn't get you. Now did it's I? It's probably on you. I don't no, know. I saw it go that way. It's all good. The... We'll, I think we'll it figure, ricocheted. We'll figure out if, if I see it again. That Maybe was good. massive, though. We're gonna have animals on the set. We need a guy in like tan shorts to handle it. You know? Yeah. Well, Pika's got like a kind of. No, ages. this is black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could. Well, that was an exciting moment that we just had. Yeah. Where did that I fucking th- come from? I, I have no idea. I literally have. No Where idea. have you been rolling around? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to ask because you're, you know, you seem to be pretty deep into, yeah, the whole journalism thing. So I mean, I wouldn't say so much. Um, kind of like I wrote a lot in university, and then I just did like just freelance writing and stuff after. And then I was like, not working hard enough. So I got like a part time job and then I like found a decent job doing like ad sales. But it's still in the same field. Like I still work in that okay. kind of area. I just like I like to write a lot. I wrote like do you guys know what the community edition is? We were in it. Yeah. yeah. Oh fuck. Wait, man, I completely forgot about that. Cause I was gonna say that. Like I, I first heard about you guys when that story happened because like i wrote for them a lot like oh, i wrote okay. a story about the snake pit and the, the hellcat oh you the guys hellcat, remember that yeah the legend of the hellcat yeah that never yeah the venue that never was yeah i wrote about uh that dirty nil show that was supposed to be there that would have been crazy oh dude out. like it would have been nuts yeah it would have been nuts and like it was at night school it ended up being at night school and it was just like it was all right yeah but like in a place like that dude God, so damn. small yeah yeah, that's what I love about shows like that. Just those really small basement shows is like, it doesn't take much to just kind of soak in the fact that it's like a lit show. Mm-hmm. You just like walk in and it's like, oh yeah, dude, everyone's having having a blast here. Yeah, it's so tight. It's like, I mean, that's not tight at all, but you just have no establishment in there, and it's just like, oh, this is dope. Everyone's just chill, dude. Yeah. But I mean. Then if something goes wrong, it's even worse. Yeah, well, you exactly. have some, but it's like control. people. Man, you have some like a security guard or a few, and you and know. people generally. I feel like if it's like that, like that show was too big. Honestly, like that show <laughs> probably shouldn't have been booked there because it was the dirty nail. They were gonna sell a bunch of tickets. Mm-hmm. Like that would have been fucked. Honestly, like I can't even imagine what it would have looked like. But it would have been dope. It just would have been like a disaster, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I feel like that kind of ruins the lore a bit, but it's just like things happen the way th- things are the way they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's very true. Yeah. That is a fact. It was a cool spot, though, because it was like behind that jam hall, like Elvis Freshly was behind that. And Where is this? It's like, it's like uh, near Victoria. It's not too far, but... What's the wildest show you've been to? The wildest show I've been to? Yeah. Like local or like we're talking like... Any. Yeah. I'll, I'll say two because like I got to like give love to like local music at least a little bit. And I'm definitely tied. 
So um, I'll say the one that's not local first. Uh, JPEG Mafia. Nice. Ooh, nice. At a... Uh, Fuck, I don't even remember, dude. Danforth? No, it wasn't the Danforth. It might have been like the Opera House, I think. It's the one that was like just a few months ago? It was, Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Okay. And it was like, it's like that place where it's like, fuck it. There's like a bowl kind of, and there's like a floor. The floor is lower. You know what I mean? Does it have an archway over the stage? Yeah. Is that the Opera, the Opera House? House yeah. yeah, that that makes two sense actually. Balconies, yeah, balconies. it looks yeah. like a fucking Opera House actually. Yeah. That's pretty wild, but yeah, yeah. yeah that's it was awesome. fucking nuts, dude. That guy was like the most energy i've ever seen he was just like like he came out with a laptop and like no dj or anything like that and just like hit play on his laptop and then like crowd surfed the whole time (laughs) and he still like rapped and everything and didn't use a backing track and it still sounded good dude all that money that he makes wow just being the only person yeah his uh producer name is what peggy or something yeah yeah fucking dope did you hear his new song bulb yeah that that's, was great that's yeah. good the I video's think he, cool he was rocking some like some uh some polo something polo in it too i was fucking with that yeah you love polo don't yeah, you yeah that's much shit. <laughs> yeah but i saw uh, it in that like vice city style video yeah yeah i rock that yeah that's a good uh yeah that's that, that's gonna be tight that, that video's video. really cool yeah 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 i love the coloring in it it's who did that my buddy as i like went to high school with him and shit he like he sells like vintage clothes. It's like Lost Vessel, mm-hmm. um, but he also like directs shit. And I've known him for a while, and he's like always done music videos. But it's like if I was gonna get someone to do a music video, it would be him. And uh, finally, one day I was like, "Yo, you just gotta film a video for me." Like, and he did. Like, hooked me up. Went to his place, and like, he's like, "Where do you want to shoot this?" And I was like, "Man, can we just shoot it like right here?" And he had all this like like these like palm trees and like dope lights and shit like that cool so like none of that like there's like a couple things that are like a visual effects Mm -hmm. but like most of it is like actual lighting and like yeah it was really cool shot on like a handheld like digital camera thing like a fucking old ass one it's like some vhs shit yeah yeah it was just like spur of the moment i was like talking about it for a while and then i was just like let's just do it i just i need a visual for my ep so and uh He's like, man, I'm glad we did it that night. Fuck, sorry, because it turned out <laughs> turned out really dope. Just like, is my sound gonna be all fucked up if I like? Ah. And not too much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. But we're, uh, we're still trying to learn our mic techniques. Yeah, I think we're getting better. But now we've got like this massive slouch on. <laughs> <laughs> gotta stand up straight. Fuck. Yeah, we just gotta do a standing up here. podcast. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> get a standing desk. Yeah. Or suspended from the ceiling. Yeah, hanging upside down. <laughs> That's cool. So how long you can last. That would give you like a good time limit. That's true. Just all pass out yeah. when you head rush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who do you think would who do you think would last the longest? It'd probably be I think probably. he would yeah. probably last You're the tallest, the longest. Right? How oh, tall are you? I feel like I'd be like because I'm the tallest, I'd like I'd be the worst. No, nah, bl- no, nah, blood takes longer to travel. <laughs> no, but like, there's more blood to travel. Uh, maybe you well, know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to test that out. Yeah. yeah. Next time you're here, we'll suspend ourselves from the Sounds ceiling. Sounds good. You guys get the rig going, seconds. and we're yeah, <laughs> we'll get into it. On. <laughs> Did you know if you stare in somebody's eyes for ten minutes, you start to hallucinate? I don't know if it I. Does. In what? Oh, I, that's probably. I've never seen that. that. I've yeah. never even. If you stare into somebody's eyes for ten minutes, you yeah, start to hallucinate. I, yeah, posted an article in the fucking group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't check it. Did you guys? Uh, did you guys, you guys watch uh, Nathan for you? Fuck yeah. yeah! This is like the one where he like he's like it pays an actor like to do. He's like paying actors to do some shit, and he like makes his girl say "I love you" to him like back and forth for like six minutes. <laughs> And then they both like start crying. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> that dude, that shit's bizarre. That's such a good yeah. show though. I've seen a couple of those, like the uh the uh he's like a he was a real estate investor but selling houses that were like free of ghosts. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a good would, one. And he would get a guy to like rid the house of spirits and he did it in like a really crazy yeah. way where he's like, Spirits get out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, spirits get out. By the power of Christ I spirits get out and he just kept Saying the same thing really loudly. Oh, you got it? You got it here, Adam? <laughs> um, not in this country. Not in what? this country. Wow. Use, use the Opera. Use the Opera browser. 
It comes with a VPN. Damn. The Opera browser? Yeah. Is that is that your guys' sponsor? No. Yes. You should get them as a sponsor. Hit <laughs> yeah, them up. For sure. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Because like, I never heard about that before. Opera? Really? Opera? Yeah. No, he doesn't. Download it. <laughs> is it free? Yeah, yeah. That's tight. Yeah. Is it VPN? Yeah. Wow. Is it like, will it, will it fuck your computer up? Or no, no, it's just one of the browsers. Like it's it's one of the top like ten. Yeah, the best browsers. <laughs> that's fair. That's like that's sick to know because like yeah, I'm a uh, Google Chrome is like you kind of just have to use Google Chrome for a lot of shit. Yeah, and I like I, I used Internet Explorer for like way too long. Like I was just like I don't give a fuck. I'm just really? going to Google. <laughs> Did you use it when they call when it was called Edge? No. Microsoft God no. Edge. Microsoft, Microsoft Edge. No. That's like that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was like, okay, guys, you gotta just chill. Yeah, chill on the edging. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary edging. Unnecessary edging. Well, that's yeah. the name of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was never a Firefox guy. I used it for a month and then Google Chrome was was the one. Firefox sucks. Yeah, it does kind of suck. Yeah. Well, there's that fucking bug. Where? Dude. Just flying around over there. Is it on me? I don't think it's a moth either. Oh, it's probably a, probably a super bug. It's probably coming in from the fucking hole in our wall now. Over there. Oh, shit. Well, I've got to watch out for that. Yeah, yeah i got to go plug a hole. I got my back turned. So You're pretty good at that. <laughs> I'm pretty good at plugging holes, yeah. Yeah. Well, you heard wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to be throwing a show the day your album is released or yeah 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 it's like man i should be talking about that but thank you for you're doing a good job of bringing it home because <laughs> uh that's an important thing to note yeah i mean i don't know it's real soon saturday so where's the show chainsaw yeah what time are you on I don't know. You don't know? Probably like last, you know? It's 10, 10.30. Like it's Chainsaw, so it's like, you know, karaoke and shit. They get you in before the karaoke. Yeah, 7 to 11 kind of thing. So You ever played it before? Yeah, yeah well, you know, a handful of times, I think. Yeah, weren't you doing um like in between the sets at the uh, Block Parent show at Harmony Lawn? I've done that. Yeah, I did that with them. That was a really good show. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. fucking love that band. They're so good. They're great. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But seeing them live is a completely different experience than what you hear on the Oh, record. fuck yeah. But like, they're both so dope. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like a lot of people, it's like their live experience is good and then their music's like not, doesn't yeah. really live up to that or their music's really tight and then their live experience doesn't yeah. live up to that. Mm-hmm. It's like they're one of those bands where it's just like, they're kind of like the full package in yeah. that way. Like yeah. it's like they're entertaining. Yeah, like yeah. their music is like it's the polished version of like what you imagine like yeah the their like live set is like. But it's like you exactly. see them live and you're like, oh, these guys are fucking hilarious. Like yeah, they're yeah. doing shit. They got a lot of energy. Like they love what they're doing. Like but they got a lot of fucking energy. Yeah, yeah, they're wild. Yeah, <laughs> they're on a good show. Yeah, <laughs> I really so. like them. They're a great band. They're yeah. nice guys too. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah. Yeah, the singer fucking uh, dumped some vodka drink in his eye accidentally on the show. Really? Yeah, it was like, so fucking funny. Jacob, that's his name, right? Yeah, I think so. He's got like the crazy like mutton yeah. chops. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, I, he he like raps and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I want like we're gonna do some tracks. I've been like oh, sitting cool. on it for a little while. Yeah, but his rap stuff is really cool. Yeah, he's nuts yeah. too. Like that guy's just like mad creative. Like yeah. he's just a uh, yeah interesting dude. Yeah, how'd you meet him? Um, I think just like in the scene, I just like, like block parent, they played that dirty nil show. Mm -hmm. Like they opened up, I think they were one of the bands and, uh, like like I photographed that. And I remember like talking to him about them or the photos and stuff then. And like, and I interviewed them when their album dropped for the community edition Mm -hmm. and, uh, like Jake, the other Jake, (laughs) it's like the shorter dude. Yeah, Yeah. 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 Um, he kind of like is like in, he's like in like the similar scene i'd say like he's like no funeral if you guys know those dudes at all it's a <laughs> not too familiar no nope. nope. yeah i mean like he's like it's like the type of dude that like if i like say his name 
be like, no, just talk about no funeral, you know? But uh, we'll just talk about no funeral. <laughs> uh, they throw shows. Like, he's in Karloff. They're in Karloff. Like, no funeral always books Karloff shows. I don't know if you guys have seen them either. But they're playing um, the same day as my release show, which is, like, kind of fucking lame. They're playing at Green Room with Life in Vacuum. Where's that? Like, it's like the barber shop. The new one. Oh, it's the one that's right over there where yeah. the subway is where the, by the helipad. Yeah. Hmm. Like, you know where the, um, you know, down the street over it's there? It's like across from where there used <laughs> but, to be You know be where the McDonald's. Google building is? Across, the, like Google, where the old McDonald's yeah. is? Yeah, or that plaza across the street. Yeah. yeah. But at Eddie. There's a show? What's his? Yeah. Fuck. I'm blanking right now. Yeah, Eddie's a... last name. Bravo. Better? No. Oh, fuck. I just call, like I just keep thinking. Oh yeah, Shreddy Standard. That's his Instagram. So it's Eddie Standard. But uh, he like has this like clothing company called Wipe Cap Co. And uh, like a bunch of people were wearing it around here, kind of thing. And then he just like started cutting hair. And now oh, he cool. like cuts hair at the green room. I always yeah. pass that place he, on the way here. On he's, the way he's a pretty young guy. Like he like played in a band too called. Um, Man, I'm like blanking on everything. I feel like a dick now. It's okay. What's their name? Ah, fuck. It'll come <laughs> to me. But uh, yeah, it's it's weird how it all fits together because the dude from Eddie's band is now in Karloff, and they're playing at the Green Room. And yeah, I don't know. There's a lot going on in this city that I'm really unaware of. The, a show at the green room i'm trying to picture like a show going on i like i know like how it looks like on the inside but yeah. just the show going on in a barbershop with like chairs yeah. around and, like, especially the... the bands that are playing too like it's not like like they've had like some guys like playing like acoustic guitar and shit there but this is mm-hmm. their first like actual show it's just like life in vacuum they're gonna be pretty crazy it's almost as weird as like playing a show in, in that ping pong place yeah yeah i remember a show happened there I think it's the only show they ever had. There. Yeah, it was. yeah, I think I heard about that. Yeah, it yeah, was it like was uh, fucking intense. It was like <laughs> it was a uh, it was two it was two things going on at once, wasn't it? Yeah, there was like um some BMX video that was uh, like being released. Yeah, or something like that. And there was, and like, was just a, like a bunch of BMX. But it was like there. the whole BMX scene was there, just yeah. like or the whole <laughs> watching it on a projector. That's yeah, watching it on wild, a projector. Dude. And then they were like, okay, we're gonna have a show. And then they were all just pissed drunk and going fucking crazy. Yeah, they crazy. were going crazy, and then there was only enough time for one band to play. No, they they just didn't want the other band to play. They're like, fuck this. Oh, they just went because for it? it was too fucking loud. People were going too fucking crazy. Is that a- Ace Ping Pong Lounge? Yeah. yeah. That's so funny, dude. dude yeah. It was so fucking crazy. <laughs> they basically just kicked the bands out. They're like, that's enough. Yeah. Get out. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. For the band or the place? I don't know. <laughs> Just in general, you know, <laughs> good for people. Yeah, good for the good for the BMXers. Good for the bands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's bizarre, dude. Yeah. It was very when bizarre was that? Because uh, I think it was like almost a year ago. Yeah, yeah. I do remember uh, that. Yeah. yeah, and it was just everybody kind of just like like crowding around this couch, the projector, and it's like, all right, we're gonna show the video now. And but it, you there's know, there's a lot of weird shit in that video. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting though, because yeah, there was like it was like your typical BMX video, you know, like people do in like you know introduction of whoever and then there's like a montage of them doing some tricks landing a bunch and then there would be a montage of people just you know just bailing and that's the those are the parts where everyone's just like cheering and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. man you don't bail light off of bmx uh-uh. yeah you're no. going fast. yeah you go <laughs> no. down dude. Yeah. like if you're going down you're going down yeah i remember i was going down a hill on my bicycle and i went to uh, jump off the curb and my front tire came off, and I flipped over the handlebars. Wow. Oh my god! <laughs> it completely destroyed my face. <laughs> then I had to go to Cuba the next day. <laughs> so you just Dude, were problems. when I got to Cuba, the girl looked at my passport. She's like, "What happened to your face?" I'm I like, fell. I'm like you're such a bitch. <laughs> I fell. Don't bring attention to this ugly shit. Have you ever fallen on your face? um like not like notably like that's like really bad <laughs> yeah i'd say yeah i'm like and that's the thing too like i know like falls are always unexpected so it's like how can you plan but uh yeah. like if I've you're ra- planning for a fall it's a little strange yeah fair <laughs> but uh like i skateboarded a lot when i was a kid yeah. and like that was something where it was like if you're gonna fall 
you just gotta like make sure you don't hit your head and shit yeah. basically yeah. like that was like the primary concern so it was just like using your like arms and shit or like keeping your center of gravity good if you fall back like keep your head up and shit it's just like instinct yeah you know? but i broke my arm skateboarding like two or three years ago and it was like the worst man <laughs> how'd you do that i like some bad instinct i was skateboarding actually and uh probably already said that i don't know yeah you did yeah but uh <laughs> so at least i'm aware but That's uh <laughs> i was like there's like a cur- like a divot in the road like there was like some like you know like drainage thing that was like a little bit lower than the rest of the road and i'm just like yeah i can hit that like no problem i'll just speed up and go into it so like i thought i would just hop over i was like you just go a little bit light on it and the board bumps up a bit and i just like leaned into it too much and just fucking ate shit like in the middle of the road dude like Fuck. on victoria street there's like cars coming oh. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like on my way to like do something like do a performance or something yeah. like i was like going to like a little like at ckms like the, the radio like the little radio station mm-hmm. if you guys know them no fucking idea no like radio waterloo or whatever CKMS. see there's a lot going on mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but uh i was going there to do some like music related thing and then yeah i like broke my arm and then i went there and i was like ble- bleeding and shit <laughs> and they're like are you okay and i'm just yeah, like fine. yeah I'm, I'm all good like <laughs> It's good. And then she's like, what the fuck happened? Like, you're like bloody and shit, dude. It's like, I fell. I fell off my skateboard. It's all good. And then I like, I went home and I'm just like, yeah, dude, my arms broke. Like, <laughs> oh, it fucking damn. sucked, dude. Yeah. But, yo, no, no, no. The worst part, it wasn't like a full on break. It was probably more of like a fracture, but like, I don't know. I never broke anything else. So I'm yeah. just like, yeah, it feels broken to me, dude. Like, it's fucked. It took yeah. a while to heal and shit. So I had to get like a sling though. But I had to play a show. And it was like I was playing with a band, so I was playing guitar. Oh my god! It was like the next day. I'm just like, oh yeah, I only played one show with my band, and uh, I broke it or fucking broke my arm right before. How did the show go? It was it was all right. Cause how, like, how did your arm feel? I was it was like my strumming arm, and I could like move my hand, <laughs> yeah. and everything was like, was it my strumming arm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was definitely the strum. But uh. It was all like fucking like bar chords and shit. So it's like playing like drop D, yeah. like everything. I was like playing grunge music and it was just like so easy to just like. True. And I guess with grunge, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. And I wasn't like lead guitar either. Yeah. I was just kind of like nice. I was singing and shit. I did like some like rap rock renditions of like some Steve Dave tracks. It was pretty wild. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Damn. it was a good show. Do you think you'll ever do that again? I don't know. It'd be cool. It's hard to get, like, a group of people that are, like... Like, I feel like everyone that was involved was, like, doing it for some other person than themselves. Or either it was me or, like, someone else in the band. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's only, like, one person that was, like, I'm just really happy to be here. And surprisingly wasn't me. I mean, Mm -hmm. like, I was happy to be there. But my buddy Raul was just, like... He was playing, like, lead guitar. And he hadn't been in a band in a while. And he's just, like... He was just so happy to just fuck around. I'm just like, honestly, dude, do whatever you want. Yeah. And then if he did some shit I liked, I'd just be like, that sounds good. Like, do more of that, you know? And he just, like, had such a fucking blast. Like, but we only played one show, and I was, like, pretty bummed out. I'm going to jam with him sometime. But everyone else in that band, like, does way too much shit now. It's pretty cool because, like, like, the drummer and the bass player, they're both in Karloff now. Cool. And Karloff was starting around the same time. And it was just, like, I played with, like, I'm like, these guys are so fucking talented. Like, I can't believe they played in my band, you know? It's like telling people I played in a band with them. It's like, yeah, fucking <laughs> Steve Dave playing in a band with those guys. Yeah. Which is weird. It's like a weird crossover because they're like a Screamo band. But do you listen, you listen to Screamo? Not like really. I wouldn't say I'm like Screamo. Huh? Scrams? Yeah. Scrams. Yeah. Scrams. I think it's funny when people call it Scrams. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I've never heard of that. No. Either it's no. good but uh no, there's some good screamo bands i'm like there's a lot of energy I, i'm one of those people who's like if there's like people putting like they're like they love what they're doing and they're putting a lot into it it's like that's just pretty tight like whatever it is like some stuff is pretty bad like rap's one of those things where like some people are doing it and they're like putting their all into it and it's so tight and they're doing it so well and then some people 
like a lot of people generally are like just doing it because they're like oh i'm just gonna rap because it seems easy Mm -hmm. and it's just like you can tell you know like it it was like edm edm is still kind of like that was like Mm -hmm. that like people thought like there was just like oh this is so accessible i can just get right into it but it's like you still have to work as hard at it yeah as you would like anything else like learning an instrument or whatever like to get good at it to where people are gonna be like yeah like i recognize that you're good at that Mm -hmm. so I don't know what got me on that tangent, but that's fine. Tangents are good. Yeah. Like that's always been my approach a little, like for the most part too. Like I really have to like make sure with my music that there's like an aesthetic package. Cause it's just like, if I'm like selling it hard and that I'm not trying and it like works all together, then that's better than just like hearing some music from some guy who's like truly not trying. Mm -hmm. Like if I make that part of my brand, and like talk about that kind of shit like uh, one of my like one of my first tracks is just like i'm this good imagine if i tried it all compared to jordan and i don't even have to ball and it's just like buddy of mine came up to me i like i recorded that when i was like 15 for the first time and like put it on like youtube or some shit in like grade 10 and my buddy's like dude the sickest part about this song is you said that line about like not trying and it's just like like imagine if you did try <laughs> it's like it would be so fucking crazy dude because like that's you not trying yeah. it's like you can totally tell you're not really trying but it's still so dope and i was like that's gonna be my whole thing dude it's like my whole aesthetic basically so i think that like crack in the voice thing is like it's something that like someone might hear that and be like oh he's not trying he just like left that shit in mm-hmm. there only did it once whatever and it's just like that's probably what you're supposed to think but it's a lot more intentional than that. Mm-hmm. No, that sounds kind of pretentious, though. No. I'm not gonna. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I don't know. I think um, I love it. I think when I first heard it, it definitely sounded like it was your first take, and you were just like, "Fuck it." But then the more I heard it, I'm like, I don't know if he. I couldn't tell. I don't know how the fuck to explain this. This is a toughie. Um, Ian, <laughs> um, let me so, let me think about this. When I first heard it, it's yeah. If I th- I definitely upon hearing it upon the first time, I I knew it was intentional. Yeah, because if you're taking the time to make. The whole song. Yeah. You're taking the time to review it. Yeah. So that's therefore true. you're taking the time to That's true. You know, just like you're you're because it's not only happening once in the song. Yeah. It's happening multiple times. So it's not like you just hear it once and you just yeah. left it as like the intro. You it's it's there. So I don't know. That it didn't really yeah. like it didn't really uh strike me as anything like jarring only because I kind of like go into that being like i guess that's why i'm really neutral about music is because i always go into it being like everything here has the purest of intentions by the artist at least i hope yeah i can hope to the highest degree so that's kind of when i first heard it, i was like oh yeah totally like i i get that you know even like the vibe of the song it's like very relaxed very chilled out and respect yeah well like Honestly, thanks for listening. Like, that's pretty yeah. tight. Yeah, no I problem. mean, I'm sure it's like part of like having a guest is like, you got to make sure well, you talk about some tracks. Some research. S- sometimes. But sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we, uh, sometimes we slip up. Yeah. <laughs> so I've here. never listened to your band ever. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't let them know. <laughs> yeah. Bad homework, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the weeks are just too busy. And then... Yeah, it happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I appreciate it even more. You know? Well, yeah. We're glad to have you here. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's this is really great. It's nice. Like I never would have expected that to be like a conversate part of the conversation, but like I really, I'm really glad it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that is one of those things too that like, like I'm glad that you grabbed that because that's there's like that's a subtle thing. There isn't a lot like that type of like idiosyncratic thing is like few and far between mm-hmm. on my my album or whatever, but like it's well played like it's placed intentionally where it's there you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like and i feel like that sums up a lot of what i'm doing some like performance art-esque shit Mm -hmm. because it's like 
like I, I think a lot about like when people are rapping like are they just like telling a story that like they want other people to know or like trying to say what other people want to hear or are they just like saying some shit that's like real straight up sometimes you hear people like rap even singing too like i've been getting it even more with singing like i hate to admit it but fucking the smiths like just listening to some of their like really sarcastic ass lyrics i'm like yeah dude like i could see a person just saying all this like snobby shit like 100 mm-hmm. percent. but uh yeah. one person like freddie gibbs i don't know if you guys ever listen to freddie gibbs but like no. you hear that dude rap and it's just like yeah like that guy's intense like he like he's from gary indiana like he so he sold a lot of drugs like there's a lot of guns and there's like people smoking crack around him and shit like that and music videos and it's mm-hmm. like like listening to him talk is like bro that's that's too much almost like it's just like you gotta be like that's too real yeah like i love it but it's just like you know like i being like a white ass person from like southern ontario and being like like i'm not going to relate to this Mm -hmm. but i can appreciate like the performance of it like it's like important art you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah and then there's like people who are just like riffraff who is like a caricature but like that dude lives that shit yeah yeah you know i think with music it's with any artist um them kind of I don't know. Uh, how can I? How can I? How can I word this? Like, because pretty much what you said, it's like you can listen to something and it can be so real that it almost makes you, you know, it's almost like watching like a really Im- intense movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, where there's it's like a historical movie and it's really accurately describing something like a war movie or something like that. And then there's, you know, a rom com, and you're like, yeah. I know why this is made. I know what yeah. purpose this is made for, but I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it because. I just, I'm aware of it, you know. I guess that's a that really good thing. metaphor, honestly. Like Thank the rom com thing. Yeah. Because it's like there's a lot of songs you're going to hear and be like, oh, this is tailor made for that. Like, yeah. this is how this is supposed to make me feel. Something that's really cool is when you hear some shit and you're like, I, this, like, either this feels nostalgic as fuck and I have I've had this feeling before, or like, I don't know what this feeling is and it's mm-hmm. strange. Yeah. You know? That's, um, I love venturing off into those types of kinds of music, types of music, kinds of music Mm -hmm. when I just don't understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah. It's nice to, I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty wild, dude. Like even just getting into like some like noise music and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. like really droney kind of music, like shit like that used to drive me insane. And I remember talking to a buddy about that. I'm just like that, like that gives me like, that makes my heart beat faster. It gives me anxiety. And he's like, yeah, dude, like it's supposed to like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then you're like, oh, fuck. It's like, damn, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's like people just want to feel like that. Like, that's wild. And then other people are like, this is how I feel. And I want to communicate it with music. And words and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, that shit's the best. Like, when someone's like, I'm just trying to communicate, like, in my head what's, like, going on. Like, yeah. that, I feel like that is, like, whenever I hear someone say that, I'm like, yeah, dude, I knew that. Like, I could tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of going back to JPEG Mafia. Yeah. That last album that he did what was it called um the all my heroes are cornballs yeah there's a lot of like ad libs in there that it paints the picture of like i don't know it's just like i can listen to that whole album and all the vocal samples in that it's just you can tell that he was working on that song the whole day and he just put like a zoom mic like a microphone like in the room and he was just like verbally reacting to like everything he heard in the song and you can tell there's just like things that are just like thrown into the you know each song and i don't know it's really interesting how yeah you can paint a picture in like that sort of way with like words that are not you know like direct lyrics yeah definitely and like uh i don't know if you guys ever listened to death grips yeah like i never i never got really big into death grips like yeah. i fucked with like their big songs and stuff like that like let try, like tried them out mm-hmm. but i just feel like jpeg mafia took what get death grips was doing and like mm-hmm. put like a little bit more hip-hop into it they put a little Pretty bit more, it up a bit yeah, yeah they made it more made digestible it more, yeah they like they yeah because it's like got that i feel like the thing they kind of share is like that asmr quality of like beat production yeah where it's like there's a lot of stereo things going on and it's not very like generic samples yeah like it's not a snare it's like this click and pop that's done like rhythmically that yeah I don't know, and then shit like that so yeah yeah definitely. death grips death grips does that but in this totally 
different way and their lyrics like i never even pay attention to the lyrics like no ever. if you read them they're fucking crazy yeah, yeah. it's nuts that yeah. guy's like a that guy like he seems like a pretty intelligent dude or like really troubled too but it's very re- relaxed Hollywood. when you see him yeah in interviews it's so yeah. strange it's pretty wild. Their interviews, they're just they're, they're super just calm, calm people. and they're yeah they have like just their- they're like they're like art students you know like they're like yeah. really like super yeah. artistic people i think like yeah yeah, they just said that they had nothing going on in their city, so they just started doing that. Yeah. And then it just developed wild. into this yeah. fucking crazy band. Yeah. But it's like even shit like that, like I get that there's a time and a place for that, but it's like you can tell based on the music that I make, like what kind of music I like to listen mm-hmm. to. Definitely. And uh, well, I think JPEG Mafia does a good job of like taking that expectation for like something a bit more soft mm-hmm. and still fucking with that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why like someone like JPEG Mafia appeals to me. But when I saw his show, dude, I was like, I was in constant like flight mode. Like I was just like on edge the whole time. Like there's so much energy, so much like adrenaline and shit. I'm, I'm just like, I'd rather like, rather it was like some chill shit. Like everybody's leaning out. Yeah, yeah definitely. Have you, have you been to uh, much metal shows? At all? Yeah, like I went to I went to like metal shows when I was a kid. What, did it feel like that kind of like for the first time? Like when you went there, like, it was all intense, and you kind of have to be on your JPEG Mafia was like more intense than any metal show I've, I've seen, and like that is true. Wow. That is truly saying a lot. Wow. Like I mean, yeah, like the craziest is. metal show. Like for someone just going up, there was like not like a setup on stage, just all black like a fucking like block for him to set his like laptop on and a bottle of water and just press play everyone was going like absolutely insane the entire time like it was like moshing like the whole place was moshing like i've never seen anything like it dude like it was like that guy truly gets people going he's like spitting in people's mouths and shit like that like it was and i was like yo i'm not i'm not 17 and i'm not like i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna yeah. fucking get in that pit right now like no thank you dude mm-hmm. like someone's <laughs> gonna get hurt there you know there's yeah. no pit etiquette happening yeah. there yeah yeah that's the thing too is like when when the whole pit like ideology get you know kind of transcends into a new scene yeah like it takes a while for people to kind of like understand how to understand do it because yeah. like the whole thing is like if you fall you Everyone, gotta pick them yeah, up. Yeah, like, because they're gonna up. die. Yeah, and I've <laughs> seen some pits where it's like, oh, you can tell. Yeah, when people are like, well, and then there's there's sometimes you can just see that some people are just trying to get some anger out on someone else, and it's like yeah. those people are scary as fuck. Dude. Yeah, like when there's someone who's like, I'm just gonna hit this guy in the back of the head. Like, yeah, yeah. see that shit a lot, dude. And it's like, fuck, makes yeah. me like so nervous to even be you out. You can in public. kind of see it from like a mile away too. You're like, this it's guy's true. gonna fuck somebody up. It's true. But then there's always like guys who are just like it looks like he's gonna fuck someone up, but it's like no, he's just moshing like hard as yeah. fuck. Like he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. I remember like, did you guys ever go to uh, like uh, and like Hope Fest or anything like that? Yeah, mm-hmm. you guys been? I'm wearing a shirt right now. Oh, that's tight, man. Single <laughs> when Single Mothers came on yeah. when they headlined, oh, okay. and it was just like like a bunch of my buddies. I guess like they had like they love Single Mothers and they've like seen him a bunch of times. So like a homecoming, not a homecoming thing, but seeing him here was tight. They're just like rolling around on the ground and shit, like running around, like screaming <laughs> oh the lyrics God. and shit. I'm just like, this is fucking wild, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm just standing there like people are always like, yo, you got to move. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to move, dude. I'm a pretty <laughs> big guy. I'm going to hit my head off something. Like I see like like one one thing, man, like Jarrell, that dude. His shows are intense as fuck. Yeah. Like fucking, he's he, got like. He runs around. Everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. he's got more energy than like like everyone i've seen basically yeah. in the scene combined yeah and like that is no shade on anyone that dude's just like yeah he gives he's intense knows how to like fuck, dude take his ball of yeah. energy and like bring yeah. it around everywhere i'm just like i think part of me maybe this is just an excuse but I, when i like move around like that i'm just like bro i'm gonna knock something over like <laughs> you know i don't know if that's just a self-conscious thing or because i'm big or whatever but it's just like i just gotta kind of chill like i'll move around a bit yeah like people i've had people be like man you got to move around more and it's like but instead I'd, of doing that yeah. i just like talk to people mm-hmm. like i interact mm-hmm. with the crowd like make jokes and shit uh, like i worked on my banter a lot this year like mm-hmm. that's something that like i like got better at and it was kind of weird to see that like yeah i've seen that progress because yeah. you're talking to like a bunch of people yeah. at once as opposed to yeah just one-on-one about not much really yeah, yeah. you're just fishing for stuff do you have any go-tos? 
not really man like i like to just say some like wild weird shit every night about like every i perform a lot like i'm trying not to perform as much as i do because like i don't know It, it it's good it makes me better at it which is like what i was trying to say too before like just seeing myself progress in that way's tight but i'm just like two shows a month that's too much like you're rapping you're not like bringing a bunch of gear with you mm-hmm. but like one show a month is like perfect and i just played like way too many shows last year like probably like almost 20 mm-hmm. and uh just yeah need to chill a little bit did you get burnout at all from doing it no i wouldn't say it like that it's just more like like it's really true like i get why a promoter would not want you to play shows all the time because <laughs> it's like if you play shows all the time the more you play shows like the less people are going to want to come see it yeah cause, honestly yeah because you know it's just not as special yeah because yeah. it's like oh i can see you next week mm-hmm. like i'm literally yeah. playing a show a week after my release party you know yeah. like i'm not trying to do that that just happened because my release party Mm-hmm. I don't know why I agreed to that shit. <laughs> After that, it's one show a month. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> New Year's resolution. <laughs> but I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, practicing my music like at these shows was good, though, because it's like, like my banter got good. I was also going to say my last show, I played at The Jungle. If you guys know where that is. Dude, where I've are heard all of, of the these jungle. fucking yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard of The Jungle. It's, it's actually here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, it's in... Uh, it's like on Herb or yeah, Herb Street. Yeah, I shouldn't say the. I'm not going to say the actual address, but but it's a. It's like I've, a I've house seen shows. pictures of of yeah. the jungle. Like a lot of lo- a lot of decent cool. bands have yeah. played there. Like a lot of local bands and shit. But uh, I played in the living room. First person to play in the living room, actually. Nice for like a little art show, and uh, I was wearing two shirts, man. I was wearing two of these shirts two flannels yeah like this exact same shirt but it just like why (laughs) it just had no pocket and it had like a little polo guy yeah and like i'm not kidding dude like the same shirt and i don't know (laughs) like they like identical except for the little thing like same color same size same everything (laughs) and i just like took off one shirt and i was wearing the same (laughs) shirt underneath And it was just like like that was pr- that was pretty good yeah, yeah. i like awesome. saved it for like my second last that's song i'm like funny fuck it's getting hot and just like take off my one shirt and i'm literally wearing the same shirt underneath oh that's so fucking funny that's good but it's like it's always shit like that it's like the day of the show i like found that shirt and i was like dude i gotta get this like have two of the same shirt and i was like man at that show tonight i'm just gonna like take one of them off like like it's getting hot that's fucking funny. That's so shit great. like that. It's like whatever. You just got to work with what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that's what makes like, and I'm not, I don't do stand up, but that would make a good stand up comedian. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like if you're going in there with material and it bombs and you don't have anything else, it's like, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah, you yeah. Can at least do but some... you, you watch like people like Chris D'Elia and it's like 90% of the time he'll just like say some really fucking hilarious shit. Yeah. He might say some dumb shit for a little bit, but then you can tell when he's like, kind of like starting up and then actually gets on it yeah. says a bunch of funny shit it's like that's that's good shit dude yeah. like that's like good freestyling you yeah. know yeah like when it's, you're just like coming up with this crazy funny shit off the top of your head like yeah that's a really difficult skill to uh yeah to acquire yeah i think well, that's one of the things i bring to the table as steve dave but not stand-up comedy <laughs> <laughs> just some some witty wittiness like I, I'm, I'm dead serious and like my music's kind of like a little more serious mm-hmm. but like soft and then you see me in person and i'm like kind of chill and it's like oh okay that makes sense like if yeah. i was like a dick if you heard my music it's all like weird and then you like were like oh man this guy's an asshole yeah. i don't know maybe i am an asshole but just like really like trying to be an asshole <laughs> you know some people are just like i'm not going to talk to you because i'm like I'm, yeah like yeah. that's my the, my thing or whatever like yeah. i'm just it's like i'm only quiet when i'm like shy I'm like I, once i start talking to people it's like you know so i can't have that like mysterious yeah you got to be engaging with the crowd yeah. but i don't think it would work if i was mysterious so i'm glad yeah i think being mysterious only works for certain artists mm-hmm. but other than that i don't i don't know if it's really a good thing yeah it's it's hard to keep consistent i would say yeah yeah unless you're just really like that right 
true. But if you really like that, then it's like that's genuine, authentic. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can really tell, I think, you know, that's some shit. Yeah. Authenticity's big. Yeah. I mean, someone like uh, like Frank Ocean, like he's pretty mysterious. Yeah. But he's like. That's him. You know who he, yeah. You, yeah. That, it's like, you know who he is. You've heard yeah. a lot of his music, but I never see many like clips of him yeah. doing anything. Interviews in the studio. Mm-hmm. Like, I bet I can find them, but. So it's yeah. like, there's, man, he's not, he doesn't like the press very much. Like, yeah. he definitely like. He's one of those dudes who was like songwriter and then it was like, oh, I'm going to make like some crazy ass fucking music and just like fuck some shit up. Like, yeah, I love Frank Ocean. I'm not going to lie because he's, awesome. he's a good example of that where it's like if he was, I don't know, if he was any other type of way, it would feel like forced. Cause it's like yeah. The way he is is just like just goes together with all of it. And then when he says that shit on, I forget what song it is, one, one of his newer songs, um, he said like hide my tattoo in Shibuya. Because, like, you can't have tattoos there. Yeah. And it's like, that's like that little thing you get about Frank Ocean where it's like, oh, he's like spending a bunch of time in Tokyo or whatever, like, yeah, or in exactly. Japan. So, like, that's the only way I'm going to learn about him. Yeah. The you're music speaks see, for itself. Yeah. You're not going to see anything in the tabloids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Chanel. That's yeah. it, right? That, sh- that song's crazy, too, because he's like, uh, see on both sides, like Chanel. And it's like, see on both sides. And then it's like, also like a channel. Like, there's, like, a C on both sides of a channel, you know? Oh, shit, yeah. And then it's also, like, Coco Chanel was, like, a spy. So, it's just, like, there's all this, like, deep... There's all these yeah, this double like, and triple and quadruple yeah. entendres. All these, like, fucking metaphors yeah. and shit. It's like, he's, he's like, a fucking genius. I yeah. love that shit. But that's cool, though, that he stays mysterious because it does allow the music to be pretty much the only way you can kind of... Know anything Get inside about his head, get... Yeah, yeah. It's probably how it used to be. Social media yeah. fucked that up, dude. Uh, well, I mean, like, you don't have to. No. Like, he's someone that is a good example he of that. He is a good it's example. Like, it's he- like, I kind of feel with social media, it's like, obviously, we're in that kind of time where everyone feels like they have to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. But at the same time, it's your choice. Yeah. So it's like, he, he's a great example of someone who doesn't, you know, do that and is super authentic. So it's more like these people need to be more of like of an influence Crazy. in the irony of social media influencers no tattoos yeah yeah it's pretty crazy that's fucking weird yeah <laughs> but yeah it's like you tell a whole story with that just saying that like hide my tattoos in shibuya it's just like that's man that's fucking yeah that's good songwriting because even if you don't know what that means you're just like what the fuck does that mean mm-hmm. like why is he hiding his tattoos like that's like some Quentin Tarantino screenwriter shit. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like make people want to know more about something, you know, so exactly. they keep listening. I love that. Yeah. Songwriting's cool. I think that's something that like um, my first mixtape is like all like me rapping. Mm-hmm. And then like on my like second album thing, Poubelle Blanche, I like I was like, I'm trying to write some songs here, like mostly earworms. Like I was mm-hmm. trying to write songs that stick in people's heads. But I think on my newer project, I focus a little bit more on like structure and like making like properly like i mean not that the structure is much different but just really like like i like when people like start a verse the same way mm-hmm. twice stuff like that but then change it right away like just like that kind of continuity to connect things or whatever like having that theme drive the whole song yeah like i think about that kind of stuff a lot more do you, you eventually know? see yourself going into the singer songwriter kind of thing where you start singing more i mean i don't think i'll sing cuz like my voice is just i don't know i just don't have it i just don't, I, I just can't i might like kind of croon you know like some jim morrison shit mm-hmm. like that's probably like i would be like uh what's the word for those dudes again is it croon yeah so are they crooners crooner, like, is that what yeah. they call them i think so like the the baritone like van morrison type shit mm-hmm. it's like if i was ever gonna do it it would be like that and uh i mean it'd be cool i like yeah. i think i like a lot of like acoustic like i really like Something that I would compare as like a, I don't know, like an analog to what I do is like just that like really dreamy like acoustic folk, you okay. know, like Nick Drake. Yeah. If you guys ever yeah, hear yeah. him, even like man, I really like Jack Johnson. Mm-hmm. Like people like that, where it's just mad chill, like good rhythm and shit though too. Like yeah. really like, minimalist too. Yeah, like some like really good Dylan Bob Dylan albums too, like Blood on the Tracks stuff like that. 
It's hard to make those live performances interesting, though. No, that's true. That's true. But if you're, like, really dope and you practice a lot and whatever, people are going to be like, true. that's some crazy shit. But there has to be something unique there. Yeah, definitely. 100%, man. Yeah. But when you see someone, though, like that, where you're like, like, this person's like a prodigy, it's like, that person just commands attention, man. That shit's wild. Mm -hmm. Shit's rare. Yeah, it's cool seeing that, though, especially when they're on the come up yeah you know when yeah you, when you've seen that they've been consistent like that yeah you're like oh they've just put on the best show forever mm-hmm. from to nobody to to everybody mm-hmm. it's awesome yeah well we're uh how long have we been going too long an hour and a half that's pretty that's long yeah should we wrap it uh sure want to do anything? a performance yeah yeah, oh, yeah, can yeah. I use a bathroom first? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna oh, kind of tear yeah, we'll, everything down. Yeah. And we'll show you where the bathroom forward. is. Okay, where? What? How, what's the performance wise? What are we? Where do I do it? Well, we'll we'll show you. Yes. We'll show you. After we're done we'll here. show you. you got anything you want to plug before? Uh, oh yeah, this was fun. Yeah, choose a camera. This well, thanks, fun. man. Thanks yeah, for coming thank on. Yeah, thank no, for thanks for having me. It was a. It's it's been a a real pleasure. I didn't expect to just come and talk about some. uh Everything. basically what was on the, <laughs> the top of my mind that's what we want man yeah, yeah. That's no that's great good format and uh my plugs you know my mixtape actually there's one thing i didn't talk about that i should talk about okay i produced uh, an ep for my friend sam and there's going to be like a release party for that on march 21st at 44 gockle street and he, oh that's oh. down that's where our old school was yeah 44 gockle Damn. yeah okay cool, yeah. cool in that like new space they have yeah, there yeah um so he's doing it with Good Co Productions, if you guys are familiar with yeah. that. And they don't do a lot of rap shows. I don't think they have. So this will be like. That'll be cool. Yeah. So I did this whole EP for this guy. I made cool. all the beats. I have a feature on it. Cool. It's pretty like. You're going to be performing? Yeah. I'm going to be performing at this show too. Sick. Cool. Yeah. So that's my next show after my release show, after that other show that I'm playing. That's at like Patent Social or some shit. So much shit. for not playing shows a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like get better at saying no. Yeah, you know that's a skill. Yeah, yeah. it definitely is, especially yeah. with that shit. Because you do, I don't know, you spend like that early time being like, gotta say yes to everything. Yeah, trying yeah. your foot in the door. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, I gotta chill and say yeah. yes to everything. But anyways, yeah, that EP or it's coming out soon. It's called Attract Hazard. Sam Nabby. It's gonna be everywhere to listen to. Made all the beats, and my EP's coming out. I think yeah, Sam has a feature on it too. Cool. I have a song called DTK. It's like a homage to DTK nice. from like his perspective, basically. And uh, I won't say too much about that, but it's going to be on my EP. Curtis Rideout comes out soon this Saturday. Cool. And oh, man. that's all I got to plug. Awesome. Sorry for rambling. No, <laughs> no, ramble as much as you want. Yeah, yeah. man. The Thanks less again. we talk, the better. I mean, it's like I, I kind of have to pee, too. So I'm just like, I'm oh, still yeah, true. I all could right. talk forever, though. You know? <laughs> I'm just like that type of person right now. All right. Cool. See you. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye.